don't have faith in God, you're wasting your time. And without that, we will never see a miracle. You will never see your miracle. Well, good morning and welcome to another Saturday morning with Time Out. Thank you for taking time out of your schedule to join me this morning. I see you there. Now, are miracles still for today? And can you believe for a miracle in your life? Now, perhaps you've heard people say, I need a miracle, Jack. I'm desperate for a miracle in my situation. Maybe you've said it in your business. Maybe you've said it in your health. Maybe you've said it in your situation that you're facing in your career. Maybe it's a family issue. If you need a miracle today, are miracles still for today? And can you believe for a miracle? This morning, I'm going to answer that question and I'm going to help you with some of the issues that people have around miracles. There are people that say miracles are not for today. Uh, there are no more miracles today and we're wasting our time believing for them. Now, I'm also going to say something about that. Now, it's interesting that when you go to the Bible, you find that uh, there are more than 150 uh, occurrences of miracles and the miraculous in the Bible. And you may say, well, they're probably mostly in the Old Testament. Interestingly enough, they, they are equally spread in the Old and the New. They're almost 50-50 in the Old Testament and the New Testament. Miracles occur. So you have to ask yourself the question. If God did not want us to believe for miracles, why are there so many examples of miracles in the Bible? And uh, so let me just say this, and I'm going to make a statement this morning, a very simple statement about miracles. So don't go away. And um, yes, yeah, so you're asking this morning, Jack, I'm in a situation, are miracles for today? Can I still believe for a miracle for my life? And let me give you the simple answer. Absolutely. The answer is, yes, miracles are for today. And yes, you can still believe for a miracle. And here's my simple statement that I want to make. If you can believe the God of the Bible, you can believe for a supernatural miracle in your life. It is as simple as that. Now, then you may say, Jack, why is it then? that miracles seem to be so difficult. Why aren't we seeing more miracles today in this world where we really need them? Well, I think God is doing many miracles, but maybe we're not always seeing them. But your question is very valid. Why aren't we seeing more miracles? What is stopping your miracle from happening in your life? And I want to just share with you the three things I believe that block miracles because when I'm finished I want you to know that when you know these things you are able to change them when you pray for your miracle now the enemy is afraid of miracles for one very simple thing because miracles that give glory to God is a death nail to him he doesn't want God to receive a glory from a miracle in your life and so he will do everything to stop you from believing. And let me share with you the three things that the enemy brings to discourage you. Let me share the three things that the enemy brings as tactics to stop you from believing for your miracle. Now, let me just say a miracle is a supernatural event that has no human, in, that no human endeavors can perform. It is outside of the domain of the human. It is supernatural. It could be in the form of a physical healing. It could be in the form of a breakthrough. It could be in the form of, uh, you, you know, in, the, in a family. It could be in many different uh, uh, areas. So it's not just one area, but it is a supernatural event. And it always gives glory to God if it's a supernatural event from heaven. And so let me start by saying the first thing why we are not seeing miracles, why you are not seeing miracles is because of discouragement. 
We don't want to ask God for a miracle because we're discouraged. Now, discouragement always pushes you down. And the opposite to discouragement is encouragement, which takes you up. It always lifts you up. But the enemy wants to discourage you before you start. And he wants to put you in your hole where there is no exits and say to you almost like making you feel that you deserve the situation you're in. You just have to be happy with where you are. But you see, God wants to encourage you this morning to say, listen, he wants to lift you up and say, start believing for your miracle in your life. He doesn't want to put you in that hole. It is not his plan. And so discouragement is one of the reasons why people don't believe, why you don't believe for miracles. The second one, of course, is the enemy wants to focus your eyes on the problem and not on the solution. And that's interesting, you know, there's a scripture that says in Acts, and I just want to go to the scripture quickly. I just want to, I'm just thinking about it as I'm speaking. Acts 19, I think it's 11 and 12. It says God did extraordinary miracles through Paul. Now, if you know, Paul was a, was a person who persecuted the Christians. He persecuted the gospel. And then he had an encounter with God. And, uh, and you may think, well, Paul was a special person. No, Paul was just an ordinary person that came to know Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, Paul's opinion about himself was, I am the least of the apostles. So in case you think that you have to be a special person to believe for a miracle, then it's not true. Paul was just an ordinary person, but God did extraordinary miracles through him. And God can do extraordinary miracles for you this morning. Don't allow discouragement to stop you from believing for a miracle. And don't allow the enemy to put the focus on you. Because he says, how dare you believe for a miracle, Jack? How dare, who do you think you are? Do you think God's going to hear you? Your little situation is nothing. You see, God wants us to fix our eyes upon him because Hebrews I think it's Hebrews 12 2 it says fix your eyes on Jesus focus on Jesus the author and finish of your faith because you see if we focus on the solution we won't be able to see what the problem is and all the antics of the enemy focus on Jesus don't allow the enemy to make your focus about your problem focus on Jesus because if you can believe in the God of the Bible you can believe in a supernatural miracle for your life. And then lastly, the thing that the enemy does that he's really scared of is your faith. You know, the Bible says in Hebrews 11 verse 6, it says, Without faith, it is impossible to please God, because they that come to him must believe that he is, and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And so the enemy wants to disqualify you before you start asking. And he says to you, don't have faith in God. You're wasting your time. And of course, if we can't, uh, it, the Bible says in Hebrews 11 verse 6, that if we can't believe, it's impossible to please God. And without that, we will never see a miracle. You will never see your miracle. So the enemy wants to disqualify you before you start. But I want to encourage you this morning. Listen, this is miracle season because we, there is a miracle working God in the Bible, in your life, in your faith. But don't allow it to be pushed into that hole. Rise up. Start to focus on the solution, which is Jesus Christ. And don't focus on the problem. Don't focus on yourself. That's the enemy strategy. And then lastly, start to believe. Start to believe. The beginning of a miracle is to believe in the God of the Bible. And you're going to see God come through for you. He's going to do a miracle in your situation because he's still a miracle working God. Yes, miracles are for today. And yes, God can do a miracle for you. My name is Jack Vint. You've been watching Time Out. I want to encourage you this morning. If you have had a miracle in your life, why don't you put it in the comments? Why don't you write it down? And you may say, Jack, it's my miracle and it's private. But you know, there's somebody listening this morning that may say, I need a miracle. When they read your account, they may be encouraged to say, if God can do it for that person, 
surely he can do it for me. So please put it in the comments. Please write it down for people to read. And I want to say to you, whenever you comment, whether it's from a YouTube channel and you push subscribe or you comment and you share, you are helping me as Time Out to reach people because you know Time Out and Time Out is all about being positive and sharing it with people. So you are part of the solution when you are involved with sharing and commenting. And I really appreciate it and God will bless you. You've been watching Time Out. My name is Jack Vint and I'm going to catch you next week.